Hello, and welcome to the third episode in our 2019 WPI Lib uh, tutorial for FRC Teams. In Java, in VS Code, we're going over the command-based robot framework. And in this quick video, we're going to do some uh, little snippets of automation and try and get our drivetrain that we made in the last video drive itself for a little bit. This is going to be really quick. Um, and, and I hope this sort of illustrates the power of the command-based framework as you start developing your other subsystems uh, and mechanisms and commands and functionality. So what we want to do is uh, we want to make a command that moves our chassis for a certain amount of time. That's it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go into here, into commands, right click, create new class, and we will call this, I don't know, move. Why not? Doesn't like move. Drive. Okay, never mind. So we are going to go here into our commands, create new class command, command, move. I don't know, whatever name you want. And you can see it's been added to our commands folder. Uh, and here we go. First things first, I want to be able to tell it in the constructor the time I want it to move. So this should take a double time. And now in this class itself, we want to make a variable for storing that time. And then here in the constructor, we will say m time equals time. So we've just copied whatever the, uh, the you know, somewhere else uh, put into here into this variable that is, uh, has the scope of this class. Um, this should require robot.drivetrain and initialize. For this, you know, for now, we're just going to do something simple like um, robot.drivetrain.setleftmotors to 0 0.5. Do the same to the other ones. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to say, okay, go forward at half speed for this amount of time. Uh, what you could do, no, let's, let's do something better. Double uh, L speed, double R speed. There's probably better ways of doing this. But here we are. So. Deal with it. M L speed equals L speed. M R speed equals R speed. Okay, we're gonna set this to M L speed. Set this to M R speed. Okay, so when we create this command, we're gonna be able to tell it the time and the speed for both sides. So we can do straight ahead, we can do turns, we can go backwards, whatever we wanna do. Um, the other thing we wanna do is start a timer. Now the way to do that is the set timeout function method. Uh, and we give it a seconds value, so we'll just pass in that m time. And that's all we need to do. In initialize, we're gonna set the motors to that and set it and forget it. We don't need to upkeep anything in execute. All we need to do is know, are we timed out? And the way to use this set timed out thing is use is timed out. And this is just going to return false until we hit the whatever time uh, delay that we specify here. So if we say move two and one one, it's going to set the motors to one and set this timer for two. Two seconds later, this will return true and the command will finish. And when we end, we want to say set oh, robot.drivetrain.set left motors zero and set right motors to zero. Cool. So right now we have a command that just 
uh, we can tell it to go a certain direction uh, for a certain amount of time. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to map that to a button. So we press a button and it works and it, it does the thing. The way we do that is in the OI class. And one thing we have to do here is that this has to be in uh, the constructor for OI, which you have to make yourself for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so let's make a button. We'll call this uh, X button. Why not? And uh, this equals new button. Is that how we do it? Let's just double check. I might be getting something slightly wrong. Button, oh, joystick button, that's right. New joystick button. Uh, the joystick, we have to pass in. Uh, we have that, that's called driver controller. The button number is the, hey, the number of the button. Let's go find that. Uh, the X button is button number three. Great. Robot map dot X. Uh, let's go button X. Boom. This doesn't exist. Button X is three. Oh, my bad. This doesn't need to be in the constructor. This can be out here. Yeah. What does need to be in the constructor is the following method. So we have a button object. We want to set a command to it. We can do that with a, a few different options. X button dot, and then we've got some options of when active, when inactive, when pressed, or when released, or while active, or while held. So we can do something, uh, we can pass in a command at any different kind of uh, event with a button. When you release it, when you press it, as long as you're holding it. We're just going to use when pressed, and we're going to say new, move, and we'll go, so remember that it's uh, time, so let's say two seconds at half speed on both. And it just doesn't know what this move is. So we have to import it. And now we're good. Save all. Control K S. Build and deploy this. And with your driver button, if you were to press the X button, your drivetrain would go forward at half speed for two seconds. That's pretty cool. You can do a single action. What I want to get into here, though, is uh, one step further, something called command groups. If we highlight the commands, create new class command, make a command group. And let's call this move sequence. A command group, if we look over here, counts like a command. Like it is a command for all intents and purposes, but what it contains is a sequence of commands to happen sequentially. There's some lovely comments put right into here that tell you a little bit of how to do it. Uh, you've got two options, add sequential and add parallel. Add sequential is do this command, and when it's finished, do the next command, and when it's finished, do the next command. Add parallel doesn't wait for the command before it to, 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 to finish. So we, were, we are going to do something like this. Add uh, sequential, uh, move uh, to half, half. So that same move command, oh, and this needs to be new. Okay, uh, let's also add sequential new move uh, for five seconds, negative zero, negative, uh, yeah, sure, 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7, and add sequential new move for like 10 seconds, go negative one and one. Okay, 
What this is going to do, this is a sequence of commands, basically saying for two seconds, go at half speed and half speed, forward. For five seconds, go backwards at negative 0.7 speed. And then for 10 seconds, spin with your left uh, going backwards at full speed backwards and your right going forwards at full speed forwards. Um, this is kind of cool. I mean, it's useless probably, but it illustrates the point. Because what we can now do here uh, on our button when pressed, instead of calling that single command, we can say when pressed, do a move, do the move sequence. Save. So now we press this button and now move sequence is going to be uh, called. Boom, boom, boom. One thing to note here before we leave off for this uh, quick episode is uh, anything that you do inside of this command group gets set at compile time. So these arguments here for your move commands are going to be set when you actually compile it, not while this is running, not when you press the button. Okay. So if you want any of these values to depend on um, you know, a global variable somewhere that's being set by something else or reference some sensor value or whatever, depend on an if statement. Um, any of that is going to get resolved right when it compiles or perhaps right when it starts up. Either way, it's not going to happen at runtime when, when you think it might happen. So don't put any if statements in here uh, about conditions to check kind of in the middle of a game or something because it's just going to give you this, the, the state that it was at the very, very beginning when this uh, code uh, started to run, when everything was created. Um, so if you need to do logic like that, you need to handle that within the command itself, not as an argument that's going to get passed in. Oops. I hope that makes sense. Um, please, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Um, or, of course, shoot us a, a message on our website, 4627.ca. Again, for Manning Robotics, I'm Joe Wilson, and we'll catch you next time.